Okay guys, so a lot of people have been asking me to cover the Roo code memory bank. Now, this does look like a very interesting project. The only thing that I don't like is number one, how to implement it. I really don't like using my custom instructions on, you know, something like this. Like, I just don't like this. And just generally, I just wasn't a big fan of the implementation of this. So what I've done basically, and I'll tell you exactly how I did it, and I'll show you exactly how I did it is I've made my own MCP server. Now, if you haven't got into this yet, guys, I cannot recommend this enough. Basically, what you can do, and it's a very, very simple process, is you can take something like the sequential thinking MCP server, right? So you take this GitHub, and I'll show you my prompt for this, right? And you say, right, I like this third-party API, like data for SEO, or in this case, I wanted RuCode, right? Uh, RuCode's memory MCP. So I just gave it both of these GitHub links. I gave it to Klein, and I said, make me an MCP server using sequential thinking as a kind of base of how to implement the MCP server and RuCode memory bank on how, like what I want the MCP server to accomplish, right? And that's literally my, that was my entire prompt. So if I just scroll up here, I'll just go here. Literally, just this was my prompt. Start by cloning both of these projects into a new directory. You can just copy this down, guys. It's probably not going to be in the description. Once you've got them both, dissect them. The important thing is the sequential, MC sequential thinking MCP is the methodology that I want to implement RuCode memory bank, as in I want to make an MCP version of the RuCode memory bank so that it works in the same way, but as an MCP instead of how it's currently implemented, which uses system prompts. And then I just got it to really make sure that it had actually read all of the files, right? Because I didn't believe it and it read all the files and I was right, it hadn't read all of the files. And then it started to create the project and then literally within like two to three minutes, I didn't really change anything. All I did was say, you need to add, because it never adds to your client settings and they obviously need to be in client settings. And then I'm done, right? Literally, it took me five minutes to make this. Now, the reason I'm making this, if you don't know, is for Ruco Boomerang or orchestrate. Now what this does is it takes one task and it breaks it into maybe 10 tasks, right, subtasks. But one of the issues this has is that each subtask doesn't have the overall context of the task, right? And that's the problem that this um, Recode memory bank uh, has fixed basically. But like I said, I didn't like the implementation so I've hopefully made something that works in the same way but as, as an MCP server. Now just to test this guys, I'm going to do a very, very quick, um, like, I'll be able to see immediately if this is working or not, basically. But even if this doesn't work, guys, I'm going to put this video up. The reason is, is I cannot recommend enough making your own MCP servers and putting them together with system prompts, right? So actually, I just changed my system prompt slightly for Klein. I should have put it here, did I? Yeah. So now I can put this inside Roo, custom instructions for all modes, right? So the, I didn't like the fact that RuCode Memory Bank was using this box because this box to me is absolutely sacred. Like I need this box to do exactly what I need it to do. So now we have a memory bank, right? It was actually surprisingly very, very easily, very, very easily implemented. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just paste this giant prompt in here and I'm just going to let it go and I'm going to see immediately whether it works or not. This prompt, by the way, is basically, it's just a website building prompt. I just need it to split into subtasks and I need to see whether it's creating the files needed in order to actually run the memory bank. If you don't know, memory bank is actually pretty crude. It's basically just writing down all of the prompts so far into a document and then feeding them to the next prompt, right? There's not really much special going on here. But there we go, check memory bank status. Of course, it didn't connect. Now it's connected on client, so I'm just gonna press cancel here. I just realized I didn't actually put this inside um, Roo's settings, so that's why it didn't work. So we can control A, control C to copy all, edit global MCP. I'm gonna paste this, but I need to remember to change, change it to, is it auto approve or did they, did Roo stop doing that? I think Roo might have stopped doing that. Try again, please. Uh, it wasn't activated. Let's just double check that this is connected. There we go. 
Just double, double, double check because MCP servers are very annoying. So now it should initialize or it should check the memory stank, <laughs> memory, memory bank status. If you don't know, guys, I always say words the wrong way around. Uh, so I almost said stank, sank potatoes or something. I don't even know. Okay, so now you can see, look, it's now creating um, a memory bank, right? Which is really helpful in certain cases. Now, you can work on this memory bank. You can make it do whatever you want. I'm not sure what it's doing here. I think this might just be from here, right? Okay, I understand the task. Is that what it's writing down? I don't know where it's getting this brief from. I mean, this is more useful than not having this information passed on to every single um, subtask, right? Then it goes on to doing its its bit, its other things. Uh, I need to... There's a, there's a different word here that they use. Is it always allow? Yeah. I need to change um, auto approve to always allow, I think. Yeah, always allow. They always do this. I don't know why they can't just use the same bloody word. Why would they change that? Like, it's so annoying to change that. Please, Rue, don't do that. Okay, so the rest of what this is doing is it's basically just doing the rest of the problem that I asked it to do. Okay, so look, if this, this is really, really great if all of this information is being passed onto every subtask. This actually fixes the problem immediately. Now, it might not pass it on this time just because um, uh, it's hard to explain, but basically the system prompt might not pass it to the subtask, right? Because that's the important thing is that this um, context always gets passed. So if you think about it, what it can do every time is it can read the context. This actually solves the problem, guys. I'm going to post this MCP server because I think people are going to find it really, really useful. It's going to get posted to my school community first and then later as a video, which you're seeing now. Let's actually just push it to GitHub real quick. So if I just go here and say help, let me push this to GitHub, and then I need to actually make the GitHub thing. GitHub.com slash logic GitHub.com. New. Uh, what's their thing called? I think this is fine, right? I, 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 I'm just helping, I'm helping them, if anything. What the hell are they called? Rue code. How, I don't know if I'm doing this right. I don't know if I'm going to piss anyone off here, but... Uh, okay, I hope I don't annoy anyone. Help me push this to GitHub. I hope the makers don't mind me doing this. I mean, it's got a specific license, right? It's open source. I think it's totally fine for me to do this. License. Oh, whatever, I think it's fine. I'm doing the community service by releasing this. It makes it a lot easier. The way that they were doing it was way too complicated. That is what I love about client guys. Like I hate, I hate GitHub. It's so much easier for this, for clients to do it for me. It's actually crazy. Right. So this is now on GitHub guys. I'll leave a link to the description in the description to this GitHub. Should be fairly easy to set up. There's no readme file. Make me a readme file please. And make sure it includes how to set up in a settings.json file and any other information someone might need. And then it even just re fucking committed my files. That is crazy. Uh, I didn't even ask it to do that. Now I just need to do git push one more time. I forget the command there. Git push dash u origin main. Git push dash u origin main. That should then push the readme file. And now you guys can use this for yourselves as well. And then look at that. This is a subtask. Instantly check memory bank status. It exists. So it exists. I will now read it. That is actually OP as hell, guys. That's so, so cool, honestly. Oh my god. It's going to be more expensive, but it just feels so good to have that memory. That's it, guys. That's the holy quintuply or whatever the hell you want to call it. 
Thanks for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, I don't know what you're doing listening to me ramble like this, but my God, is this some value. I really hope people actually see the value in this and not just leave me negative comments. Thank you for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. GitHub for free. Check out the school if you want to support me or if you just want to learn a little bit more about these things. Thanks for watching and peace.